This week, Bezos Hashem, this coming Shabbos, will be historical. I guess uh, not only for our community, not only for Flatbush, but will be historical throughout the world and be a nachas for our Kaddish Baruch Hu. A nachas for Hashem. Uh, I just want to make a, a few brief announcements before I introduce the Rav and, uh, and give over the, the podium to the, to the Shilas, to the well, the issues that, that are potentially, potentially, potential issues that might come up over the course of this coming Shabbos and any other Shabbos that you might have guests who might not be um, as attuned to halacha. But I just want to make mention to, to you just the schedule, just briefly a few remarks. So first of all, I, I hope that everyone in the room, besides, you know, we, we had a, a chance of a yuntiv to meet many people, people are inviting, people are understanding what needs to be done, reaching out to a relative, to a co-worker, to a person on the block, to somebody who they do business with, that they can reach out to them and invite them, Kahalacha, the Rav will talk about that, Kahalacha to their home for Shabbos, maybe for Shabbos meal, etc. Um, for the whole Shabbos, that they spend Shabbos with you, and to invite somebody. So I, I really encourage each person, not only for themselves and their families, but also for their, that they should spread the word to their chaverim, to people who you know, are you inviting? That's number one. Number two, I just want to make, make, uh, make a clarification. Everybody understands this. There's, you'll see in the periodicals, specifically the FJJ and other, uh, other newspapers, and also there'll be signs up as to what is really happening, what is happening during the course of Shabbos that you can tap into. The fact that you're here at the Aguda, Beis Ben Yamin, this is a major hub, we'll call it, of activities over the course of Shabbos that you're able to tap into and bring your guests to, and that they can enjoy not only your home, and not only the Ruchnius and the Gashmius that you provide them at your home with your family, but that you can tap into the many aspects and the many activities that are happening here, whether it be the Onik Shabbos that's happening here, there's other, there's other locations, it's also by Rabbi Reisman Shul and they go to Madison, there's something up in, in uh, Marine Park, down by the Tamatora, and also by the Young Israel of Midwood. But uh, over here, there's set, there are five locations that activities are happening. You can tap into specifically the Onik Shabbos. You can tap into the Shabbos afternoon, um, Shabbos afternoon lecture series. There's Shal Shudas, and finally the Motzei Shabbos Havdalah. That I encourage each person here, and I encourage the whole community. If you can get the message out to your chaverim, that people need to just go online. You can go to kirov.com, the Shabbos Project, and go and sign up, and you can get a ticket for yourself. You can get a ticket for your guests. It's for free, and you can, um, you'll be able to, to join for the Havdalah program. I ask everybody to please do it expeditiously because we, the, the tickets are, the room is filling up, and there's only a limited amount of seats available. I will tell you that each shul each shul in the community is 80 shuls that are participating, 80, 90 shuls, maybe even more. I don't even know at this point. And each, each shul has, can do their own venue. However, if you want to tap into certain shuls that have a davening and have, a, a, you know, have, have, have gotten people to come and daven, so like Yehuda Green will be here for Shabbos, and uh, Shalami Dax will be davening here, and Rabbi Reisman, Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda Green will be davening Shabbos Day. Etc. So look at the venues, look at what's going on, and decide where you want to tap into. There's a printed, printed out uh, handbook that uh, Shia, raise your hand, Shia, is uh, right in the middle. is giving out some handbooks. You can go online, pick that out, and print it out if you'd like to. And the last and not least is that we encourage you to bring your guests to shul, sit next to them, daven with them, and there are introduc- introductory minyanim that will allow them to go and hear about about the beauty of Shabbos, the beauty of davening, etc. If they can't sit throughout the whole thing, that will take place in the different kahilas, different shuls that are taking place. And specifically in this shul, 
Uh, it will take place after the Rav's speech. I encourage each person that's bringing a guest to the shul to please bring them in the morning for davening, but be here by at least 10.15. That they, you should encourage your guests to be here by 10.15 to, uh, to the drasha, that the Rav will address them specifically, and uh, it should be very heartwarming. Without further ado, I want to thank the Rav for all his involvement, all his uh, encouragement, all his participation, who has been a, uh, a, a real stalwart and, and guide with regards to the Astaira, with regards to all the hadracha that this project has taken upon. And so I, I really want to thank Rabbi Leif Shlita for all his, for all his efforts. And without further ado, the Mordasar of Basement Yaman, I'll go to Basement Yaman, Rabbi Leaf. Truth be known, we have a, a Levaya today in Akihila, Danny Kriegsman, an incredible Erlich Yid, whose Levaya is going to be taking place shortly in Ulit. And at a certain point in time, I was clearing back and forth what to do. I spoke to his son, my beloved friend, Reb Sadia, who's the Amuri HaTavach of Ar Kehila, and I decided that the, the greatest schus for, for Danny, Reb David Ramesha, would be to continue to give the shir and Lila Nishmasai, and I'll make my way after the shir to the Beis HaChaim to join them by the Kfur. I won't be there for the Leviath. In Miami Beach, Florida, there was a Talmud Chachem, who owned a bakery. He was nifter this past summer. His name was Rabbi Weiss. He was a Talmud of the Miri Yeshiva here in New York, a Talmud Muvik of Rabbi Abba Berman Zatzal, and also a Talmud of the Lubavitcher Rabbi Zatzal. And he had this bakery, and aside from being a mechanech for many years in many schools throughout the country, he used the bakery as a forum for Kiruv. And one day he gets a phone call from the director of an educational system. They're doing a unit on Shabbat, and he wants to bring a hundred children, Erev Shabbat, on Friday morning to the bakery to experience a Jewish bakery. He welcomes the opportunity. This clergyman arrives with a hundred kids coming off two school buses, and he starts to explain to the kids, we're doing this unit on Shabbat, and I wanted you to get a feeling as to what Shabbat is all about. So Rabbi Weiss provides for each child a challah. And he tells them, take the challah in your hand, lift it up, and we're going to sing the special song on Shabbat in honor of the challah. Shalom Aleichem, Shalom Aleich. This guy thought that the bracha of Shalom Aleichem had nothing to do with Malachim coming to the home to see how a person makes Shabbos. This clergyman thought his entire life that Shalom Aleichem was Shalom Aleichem and that they're singing peace to you bread. So he said it in Hebrew and he said it in English Shalom Aleichem, peace to you, bread. And a hundred children sang along with him. I thought maybe the Hisaf is, that's Pshat Boi Chala, Boi Chala. Rabbi Yisai, Nish Sulachem, Tzaveinu. A hundred Yiddish Akimda are taught a ludicrous message that when we sing Shalom Aleichem, we're singing to the bread. Is that why that famous Yid in the picture, the Lower East Side in a coal cellar in Ludlow Street, sat there making Shabbos by himself with his family in Europe? A famous picture from the early 1900s that I've seen hundreds of times, with a long black beard and gleaming eyes. That's why he made Kiddush in a subterranean coal cellar. That's why Yidin in Auschwitz Makabal Shabbos, Chadoidi Likras Kala, Pnei Shabbos Makabal. It's a tragedy. 90% of Yidin in the United States do not keep Shabbos. We're going to change that. That's what this upcoming Shabbos is all about. 
So in the Hamish Yidden of Flatbush and Minneapolis and Muncie, the five towns, New Jersey, Lakewood, Cleveland, Los Angeles, are going to invite and are going to host tens of thousands of Yidden, hundreds of thousands of Yidden throughout the world to keep Shabbos in its entirety. And that's the aside of what we're doing. We're keeping Shabbos in its entirety. We were fortunate to meet the chief rabbi of South Africa. And there, for the most part, the majority of Jews are not Shema Mitzvahs. But he insisted, Rabbi Goldstein Schlitter, to make sure that it would be done, Kedas or Kedin, keeping the entire Shabbos. But let me explain to you one more thing. I'm not going to give a mimer about Kedusha Shabbos. But Erlo Chayidin, B'nei Terah, B'nei Elio, we realize what Shabbos is. The Matana, Toiva, that the Kodesh Baruch Hu had, the Beis Knuzov, specifically for the Jewish nation. We keep Shabbos, we're in business, like the Chavetz Chaim said. But there might be frustration in that we'll be zeicher to bring many people to our homes for Shabbos. As I mentioned that the Aguda, Iker Avayda is yours. All of the excitement and the hubbalu of Mitzray Shabbos, Havdala with Yehuda Green and Benny Friedman and Shleim Adax, half of a fellow. What's going to change their lives is the fact that you bring them into your inner sanctum. In the corporate world, it's unheard of of bringing co-workers into your inner sanctum. The drawbridge is up, the moat can't be crossed. You want to have an office party, it's in the office. But you don't bring college kids into your home. You don't bring people that are literally estranged from Yiddishkeit into your inner sanctum, into your Mokim Amigdash, into your Mokim of Kedusha. When you do that, you don't just show them the beauty of Shabbos. You show them that they're your family. You show them that you're going to expose them to your kinder, to your heilige kinder, to your deiris, the most precious commodity that we have. But your love for them is like the love of family. And that sholent and those mirais are going to change their lives. And even if it doesn't change their lives, and even if it's just one Shabbos, that Shabbos is eternal. Mo of Shach Zatzal said over, that the Briskarov Zatzal was posed with the following dilemma. There was a Chinech school in Afula, in Eretz Yisrael. And it was very difficult to staff the school with Rabbeim and Moros. It was a tremendous, huge expense. And they wanted to put their resources someplace else. They weren't accomplishing anything. The kids weren't even graduating, going to Mamlachti Dati schools. They went through the system in Afula and they remained Mechal Shabbos. So they wanted to get Rishus to pull the plug on the school. Biskarov told them 65 years ago, Il meint as limet ha-toyres ha-shema osid, limet ha-toyres fa-itzta. You think limet ha-toyres for this grand future plan, you'll teach them Torah and they'll become G'dayli Yisrael? Limet ha-toyres here and now. If Yiddish akin to learning Torah, you matzlech. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you, those in the Ezra Snoshim and those in the Shul, and those that are watching this and will watch this throughout the country, this Shabbos is going to be a success story. The fact that Yiddish Kinder, Eneklach of the survivors of the concentration camps and of Ludlow Street in the east side, are going to keep Shabbos in its entirety, Hadra Torah Yoshna, thousands will walk the streets. And the idea is to bring them into the Shul, we're not creating a Shabbaton. We're not contacting a Kirov organization and saying, host 5,000 people for Shabbos. There are 90 shuls in Flatbush that are going to have people that never kept Shabbos in their shuls. And as Avioni said, there are five hubs, including a restaurant. What's the name of the restaurant? T-Fusion, that somebody is paying for the entire restaurant to have a suit of Shabbos for 100 people. That's wonderful. And everything are good, it's going to be incredible. Charlie Arari, it's giant. 
But the bottom line is, it's going to your shul and bringing them into your shul and davening with them and sitting with them at the table and having your children sit on their laps. And whether they're older or younger, men or women, it's going to be an extraordinary experience. We're going to show the Rebbein Yisraelim what the seculars say is not true. There is no gap. Nothing has to be bridged. A yid is a yid is a yid. And it makes no enough community what his background is, his lack thereof, how estranged he is. You don't know who's close to that Kodesh Baruch Hu. So this Shabbos, regardless of what happens the following Shabbos, is going to be an extraordinary Shabbos where we're going to bring in Flappish alone in over 90 shuls, 1,000 yid, 2,000 yid. And all over the country, it'll be the same thing. When I was a kid, I went to Pirche. Where was Pirche in my day? My mother and the Rebbitsons and the Mir started a Pirche at the Mir Yeshiva. It was the only Pirche in Flappish at the time. We had healthy snacks like apples and uh, oranges. And when I went to Barapak, I found what Pirche really was about. Jawbreakers and bit of honey and chocolate bars. We had a Pirche leader for two years, Ichi Lohenbrown, Rabbi Ichi Lohenbrown, a legendary Talmud Chachem and a leader in, in the Kirov movement in Baltimore. He told us over the same story 50 different ways. The Zelba Maisa. And I see, this is your Maisa. About the Heilige Baal Shem Tev Zatzal. So say the later of Akal Yisrael. Seems like the Baal Shem Tev was always getting lost with his band of merry Hasidim. And the, the Baal Shem Tev got lost. And he ends up in a vault in a forest. And they come up with a paya, a Yiddish paya, a lumberjack. And they offer him a schnapps, and he makes a brach of bari mine mezoynes. And the Hasidim laugh. Shem Tov says, don't laugh. Schnapps comes from grain. The snowstorm ends, and then we go back to Mezvish. That was the, what was the story? The story was a Yid made a bracha. The story was a Yid was mamlach der benishalim. The story is Shabbos. If hundreds of thousands of Yid are going to keep Shabbos, that's the story. End of story. A successful story. And the fact that there are hundreds and hundreds of families in Flappish that are frustrated because they can't find somebody. They've tried two and three and four times. That's also part of the story. So the Benjamin sees that there are thousands of Yidden that care about other Yidden. You know what the ladies in their good are doing today? They're going to be going to the malls. They came up with this patent. They told my Rebbe Tzimor Abela. They go over to all the kiosks we have all these Israeli kids who say to you, Shavua Tov, Mashlumcha, buy 50 bucks of Ava, buy $100 of Ava, I'm going to remake your face, remake your phone, remake your life, and they're going to remake their life. They're going to have it for Shabbos. These kids don't know what's hitting them. If they knew about this, they'd be running for the hills. There's going to be a ton of ladies going to malls today trying to invite these kids. There's a cafe that's around the block. They're going to go to the waitress in the cafe. You gotta try and try and try. That's what Yiddish gets all about. Ultimately, Rabbi Yoni will tell you the Shabbat.com and the ways of con- connecting now with other Yidin that are ready to be invited. But that information wasn't disseminated yet because of the idea that we have to try. We have to show the Rabbi Nishlam that Flatbush is trying, that Muncie is trying, that Lakewood is trying, that Bastion of Tyra. Muslim! 5,000 Talmud and Vosmedef and Hub. But if there's a kid down the block or a college kid in a university or somebody in another township that can experience Shabbos, they're doing it in Lakewood. It's a mahapech. It's a revolution of Shabbos, of chashivas of Shabbos. Like the Rosh Hashiva, Goyen Rabbi Shech, that told me before we had one of the meetings with the Rabbonim. This was planned for months. He said, Not just for those who are coming, but for those who are invited. So realize that we already were matzliach. We have to continue and figure out ways to enhance it. So we'll start with several questions that were asked, and if there's time, the Tzibur can ask questions as well. What about the wine? These people are Chalei Shabbos, the first time they're keeping Shabbos, they're yidin. Some of their spouses might be goyim. There's a machlekes between modern of Al-Yashiv Zatzal, modern of Shlem Zal Zatzal, my Rebbe, and modern of Moshe concerning Yayim of Ushul today. Just know from the get-go. We're not looking for Chumrus, but you know what the halach is. 
Rav Yashiv and Rav Shlomo Zalman were of the opinion that there's no such thing as Yayim Avushal today Lahalach. Yayim Avushal, excuse me, Yayim Avushal Lahalach. Said that hundreds of years ago, Yayim Avushal was a Miyat Sheba Miyat, there wasn't a lot of wine, and most of it was not Yayim Avushal. So they make Xero and Yayim Avushal ben Agest, Amyenam. And also they explain that today the Yayim Avushal is totally different than other Yayim Avushal. And the fact that then it was cooked in open vats so that the bouquet, the flavor, the sugar dissipated, it was different, and it was identifiable as the Hamavushal. But today, being that it's cooked in sealed pipes, you can't really discern between the two. So Shem Zalman and Rav Yashiv are the opinion there's no din of the Hamavushal today. Mar Rav Moshe Zatzal disagreed, and we follow Rav Moshe. And he held that there is a concept of Yayim Mavushal. Now ordinarily what I advise people is to be machmer like Rav Yashiv and Rav Shlomo Zalman concerning a guy pouring you wine. Don't rely on Yayim Mavushal. But when a person is not yet Shem Shabbos, you certainly can rely on Ramosha. But in this situation I would advise that if there's a spouse of the person you're inviting who's not Jewish, Yayim Mavushal will suffice. What happens if they bring you a bottle of wine and the bottle of wine is not Mavushal? Well, this is what you do. You tell them, this is such exquisite wine, I want to wait for Yontif to use this. Or, you hold on to the bottle of wine, you pour it for them, and say, I'm putting it away for another special occasion. Obviously, if it's not Mavushal, they can't touch it, they can't be involved with it. That's as far as the problem of wine. The best thing is to be prepared ahead of time. They bring products before Shabbos that have a questionable ashgacha, they want to use it. You see, my wife makes a delicious dessert, I don't want to insult her. Or if you don't want to be chauvinistic, my husband made a delicious dessert, and I don't want to insult him. You come up with a cheshbin as to how to put it away, and you have to have the seichel. Shaking a woman's hand. Generally, in secular society, there's no problem with extending a hand. Now, there are different shitas on this, but Ramesh is at Salah, Chazun Ish, Hold, Yahar Vayamr. No aids. Other places come amount it. What should you do? This is what I suggest. And I want to rem- remind you, Baruch Hashem, you all belong to wonderful shuls all over the country, especially here in Flatbush. And you have Tamid Chacham and Paiskim. Consult with your Rav. I'm just giving you over what my experience was 19 years in Minneapolis, now the sixth year in Flatbush, based on the mudim that I had from a Rebbe Rabbi Zalman. I spoke to him about these issues, things I heard Pel Pef from Rebbe Yashiv. Tamidim of Rav Moshe. So again, this is my approach. There are many other approaches, but I was asked to discuss this, so I'm discussing this. When it comes to shaking a lady's hand, come pre-prepared. My shver zatzal again, Rav Atzadik, Rav Yaakov Levi Shmuel Dardek zatzal, was a big Talmud Chachem. Stipe zatzal would stand up for Malik Kimasai. He very often was in a compromised position. He had a safer in his hand. When the lady would stick out her hand, so he like inadvertently, like, you know, just shake the hand with the safer. What you can do is do what I did. And this story is Nitshaich. There's such you'll see such tremendous siyat of Ishmael over Shabbos. You're not gonna know where this brilliance comes from. It doesn't come from me, it doesn't come from you, it comes from the Rabbi Shalom. In 2001, at the beginning of the first Intifada, so I was invited with my Kahila to go on a mission. Federation mission to Eretz Yisrael. The UJ was behind it as well. I asked the G'daylem of the Mietzes, Rafael Shlok Shlita, Rav Chaim Levin Shlita, and they said to go. I went with all kinds of guidelines, glad kosh, I can tell you so many mices that happened. 23 members of my Kehillah Beis Yisrael went, and these fellows wear hats, I told them, don't take your hat off the entire trip, even to take the shower. Make sure you're wearing a hat. Now it's not a din in a hat, it's to show that Erl Chayyidin also can be part of a mission to support Israel. So whether it's a kippah surga or a hat makes no difference, but the idea was, show who you are, show your colors. For three days, we were with people from all over the country, 500 people, 95 came from the Twin Cities, 23 Erl Chayyidin from Aikil. We came to a kibbutz, a magnificent tourist kibbutz, but because the intifada was shut down, so they plugged in the Ferris wheel for us. As we get off the bus, my whole entourage, we're walking up the steps of the kibbutz, the manahelet of the kibbutz, a 
Like an 85 year old lady, she comes down and her greeting was, Don't dray, don't poke your nose in anybody else's business, just sit where you're supposed to sit. It's a beautiful welcome. So I said to her, Aleichem Shalom. So something triggered something in her mind. So she stuck out her hand. I didn't give her my hand. Ah, you're from that soul. You're from that group. So I said, You know why I don't give a hand? She said, You're scared of me. So I pulled out a very nice picture of my wife. And I said, This is my wife. You think I'm scared of you? Like if I touch you, I'm going to melt, you know, like the wicked witch of the West. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to melt with the water. So I said, you know why I don't give you a hand? Ken, Lama. I honor you. And explain to the, to the Jewish people, women are not just touchy, feely, huggy. They're on a pedestal. A wife, a daughter, a sister, a mother. But an average lady, she's on a pedestal. We don't have the chutzpah, the umbrage to even touch her. Now they think we don't touch them because they're diseased. Because they're like the untouchables in India. You got to explain it. You know what happened after that? She said, oh, first time I heard things like that. And for the next three hours in the kibbutz, she was my puppy. I'm telling you, wherever I went, ketchup, the man held to the kibbutz was mamish like my, my talmita. We're going back on the buses. I want to talk to you for a moment. And she says, do you know the reason why I was so angry at you? Because I grew up in Me'a Sharim. And when I was 15 years old, I bolted for a left-wing kibbutz. When I see you, my heart is broken. I know I should be doing what you're doing. Now would that have been my normal reaction? Mechut sefes that you are. We slept there 6,000 miles from Minneapolis, been in Tavada, to turn on your kibbutz. And you're starting up with me, I didn't even say anything. Maybe I'm Amish. I don't even know I'm Jewish. But the bottom line is, I didn't say a word. Just took it all in. And gave her a response. I think it turned her around. So you have to be a little foreprepared. If your rough says you can shake a hand, shake a hand. If you want to follow Chazanish or Moshe, like we do, do what we do. If you want to have a safer, whatever it is. Technology. What are you going to do with a cell phone? You take them to the side for a few moments, they're coming to you for Shabbos for the first time in a Shem Shabbos environment, and explain to them Shabbos is all about connecting with God, soaring heavenward, and disconnecting from the world. And we're going to do it all together. So we want you to experience Shabbos and the entire concert. So you basically explain to them in a nice way that you know what? We disconnect the phone. We disconnect the iPad. We have nothing to do with technology. We stay, do it in your own way, any way you want to do it. But it's a wonderful opportunity to explain what we're all about. That the family and you mean so much to us, we don't want to be distracted. Use your own chach ben pichas. Speak to Rabbi Yaini, speak to Rabbi Yaakov. These are the people who have been doing this for dozens of years. At the end of the day, it's all about communication, being prepared a bit ahead of time. Shiloh was, do you invite somebody just for a meal when you know they're going to be Mechal Shabbos? I'm not getting into that Shiloh. I'm just telling you, Harab Shalem Azalman was Madrach me, and this is what I would do. The purpose is the entire Shabbos. That's the goal, to keep Shabbos in its entirety. Only a meal? For another time we can discuss that. So basically, you make an invitation, and when you Offer the invitation. You tell them we have a spacious place for you. You're going to spend the entire Shabbos with us. You'll attend the concert from the beginning to the end. You'll see all acts of the play. If right then and there they tell you we're only coming for a night, then tell them maybe another time. This is not the Shabbos. But if they hear what you're saying, you're in good shape. If Thursday... They call up and they say, you know, we really wanted to come for Shabbos, but we can't come for the whole Shabbos, coming for that meal. According to Abshalom and Zalman, do not have to rescind the invitation. That's what he told me. And this doesn't work with Shonim and Pirish, by the way. 
If you have kids that went off the derech, Rabbi Wallace they're doing an amazing thing with a lot of kids at entire Shabbos. For many, many kids, Nebuch, that went through the yeshiva system are off the derech and they're going to come back for the Shabbos. They have a way of dealing with that and dealing with the entire Shabbos. But a shaynu period, some guy went off the derech, you can't go ahead and say, well, come part, you can't come part, it's It's for someone who doesn't know anything about anything. And Mamela, if you invite him for the entire Shabbos and the fellow now wants to pull out for part of it, you don't have to renege. Similarly, if on Shabbos the person leaves, so he leaves. But by, by inviting him for the entire Shabbos, doing everything, it has to be a sincere invitation. Don't bother inviting somebody who's not going to come for the entire Shabbos. That's not this Shabbos. And Mamela, all these things that will come up, you'll have to use your Seichel Ayosha. We can't prepare for every contingency but benegah, umbrellas, if it rains, this and that. Avadi, you can't sanction Chil Shabbos. Maybe be Malamayim, maybe be Malamayim. Consult with your Rav what to do. But at the end of the day, realize this beautiful concept of thousands of Yidin here in Flatbush. And hundreds of thousands all over the world are expecting up to half a million Yidin in Australia, in Brazil, and Argentina, all keeping this same Shabbos together, keeping it together like the same, is Nifl in the Velt. You want to enhance the Shabbos. You want to have Zmirais. You want to have Kishmaka, Suda. You want to have Shmuzerai. There's not going to be time even. It'll be so busy between the davening on Rish Chodesh and the dancing and the Einik Shabbos. Einik Shabbos, you come with your guests. And we made a decision that for the Mitzvah Shabbos event, there's going to be a proper Mechitzah. The Einig Shabbos, it's going to be family style, and the idea is you are hosting them. That's why the suit is Friday night at home and Shabbos by day. It could have been Friday night, the suit would have been a lot easier in Shul. But we wanted to give the ability of the family to host them. So Friday night, Bez Hashem, you'll have the suit in your home. Then your suit continues in Shul, sitting at the same table with the same people, your family and your guests, if it's one or five and you continue enjoying the Yonik Shabbos in Shul. So just realize what the mindset for all of this is. We have to usher them in to Shabbos, but do it in an oifen that we're not going to chalila disturb them. There's so much that they're accepting upon themselves, we have to make this transition easy. What about Koilisha? <clears throat> I heard a story that a fellow in Williamsburg was on a subway, and a nice African-American lady, she was listening to music quite loud, and she was singing along. So the guy doesn't know for nothing. He goes, Chitzpe, Kalisha, Kalisha. She said, how did you know my name? My name is Kalisha. That was the nice that it happened. You are the nish veisach nish, but that's the nice that I said it happened. So what do we do with Kalisha? You know, we live in a door of the sound bite. So I'm apprehensive in what I'm about to say because we like to sanitize history, even G'daylum. Well, I can tell you the Maestro Shehoya. I'm not going to say the name. From the G'dayle Oilam, one of the heads of the Eidah Charedis, a dying a Paisik Hador, and the Rav of the most prominent shul in Yerushalayim. A friend of mine learned by Rav David in Brisk many years ago, 37 years ago. And his stanchi, his dira, was downstairs from this garden. And they would always invite him up for Sudis. At this, Anak Sheba Anokim. At his Suda, his daughters were the other end of the table, and when they sang Zmirais, they sang Zmirais too. You couldn't hear them very loud. And it was Trey Kolo I don't want people to stop going to this man's cave, so I'm not going to say the story. I'm not going to say who it is. But it's somebody that everybody was macabre as a place of So you see one side. Many others hold it doesn't work. So what do you do? Simply sing out loud. Make sure everybody sings. And very often, if you're singing, you're not getting anybody else to sing it. So I feel, if you need that, you can consult with your of, that if there are <coughs> ladies at the table that somehow or other are singing with, probably won't because they don't know those mirrors, but somehow they get connected with something, so you sing also. This isn't the time for you to schmooze. 
This is the time for you to sing out loud. You'll be singing out loud. You won't hear anybody else. If you need to go that way, you can. That's my feeling. Tnis. I told over on Shabbos an unbelievable story with an uncle of mine. And again, consult with your Pesach. I had an uncle, his name was Hagoyen Hagodler of Uriya Broidezatza. He was the Rav of Givatayim. He had seven shuls in Givatayim that he was the Rav of. Not my great great uncle, my uncle. My mother, Zosayn Gazun's oldest sister, in Sira Lashon, was married to Rav Uriya Zatza. Right there in Arazesim, next to my Zayda, my Baba, my father, all the uncles and aunts, they're all there in Harazesim, way up on top. So I came to him. He was in Tough Shin Lamed Hay. I was a kid in Kultura, 16, 17 years old. I said 16, 17, you shouldn't guess exactly my age. Uncle Bonham. So what happens is, is that I went to the different shuls with him. There was a Chazen Motzen. There's a famous Chazen Motzen now in, in Canada. He was a Wunder Chazen, a young man. He was the Chazen. <laughs> So we go to Shul Shabbos this morning. He points out a college kid with a lot of hair. It was in the 70s. He says, that's a student in the Universita. He's from Argentina. I want you to sit next to him, explain to him the David. I said, like you mean to, to Baruch Shama, right? No, explain to him the David. By Baruch Krishma? Yeah, explain to him the David. By Sheikh Hanad? Explain to him the David. In middle of the Shabbos? Explain to him the David. Okay. Explain to him the David. And after I walked Uncle Uri home to the Sud, I said, uh, Uncle Uri, the gun says, Ach is la dam. Wasting your time, Uncle. Because this guy already is fachap by the missionaries. He starts telling me that the missionaries started talking to him. My uncle, who was in his 70s, went white in the face. But so Shabbos, he tells me, we're going tomorrow to Yerushalayim. You're going back to Yeshiva. And I, I'm going to take this kid with me to Yerushalayim. Shanghai is the kid. This is not the day of the limousine and the spatial. He got on the bus to the Tachra Merkazit with me, Yerushalayim. I went to Kulturim by Dvigandha number 12, and he asked me the name of a Talchuvi Yeshiva. He had no shaykhs to this. He was a chavrana. He had no shaykhs to this. I remember there was a Yeshiva, Dvar Yerushalayim, Rav Horowitz, the grace of Tam Atrachim, Tam Rebellion Lapian. It's where the chavrana gula is now. So he takes an asimon, he puts it in, he tells me the dial. He didn't speak English. Person answers the phone. I said, the Rav of Givatayim is here to enroll a student in Dvar Yishalayim. He'll be there in about half an hour. He took a bus and he went to Givatayim, he went to Dvar Yishalayim. End of story. He enrolled the kid in Yeshiva that day. The kid of Gublubin Hashem at Terah Mitzvahs. This is the Rav of Givatayim in his 70s. And he went with sugar. Rabbi said, that's what the Shabbos is all about. It's not a huge deal. Just be yourself. Invite them to the Shabbos table. Make them feel as if they're part of the family. <clears throat> what about, as I said, a non-Jewish spouse? Inviting a co-worker Let's say a lady, and she's married to a shake, it's a guy. Invite them. Let me tell you a big say. When it comes to Gerus, the largest, brightest red flag that there is, someone who wants to convert because they want to marry a Jew. Does Mamish Golnisht. We reject them out of hand. Nobody who has any shaykhs to being a shaymatari mitzvah would ever, ever, ever convert someone who wants to do it to get married. That's not a real gerus. But once they're married five, ten years, and they're not worried about the shvig or somebody's going to push off the wedding because they're not Jewish, and they decide to get married, what could be a bigger mitzvah than that? Now the lady or the man is not living in sin, but Baruch Hashem married to a yid. This happened in Minneapolis several times. There was a lady who was not from, married a high school sweetheart from, 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 from Connecticut, Ended up marrying this fellow. She had four children. Sent them to Torah Academy. They became close to us. I was Megaya him. His name is Alicia Michal today. And they have four incredible kids. One still learning in the Kyle in the Mir. Two of them live here in Flappish, married to wonderful husbands. Another one, 
He's an Eretz Yisrael. He's a Ben Taira. He's in the army. He's an Achnach. I don't care. He's showing me Torah admits he's a Knach. The guy learns Shas. The bottom line is that all came from being Mekarev, a lady who was married to a guy. Now, I'm not saying go out and do this. But if it turns out that there's a spouse, bring the spouse. for Vosnisht. The greatest Kirov could be to turn these people around. You're not going to proselytize. But certainly, if this, and very often when it's happening, I'll tell you from my experience, is that the fellow that becomes Jewish or the lady is much darker than the original one that makes them from. There was a famous story going on in University of Minnesota. There was a, a kid who went to school in University of Minnesota. The father says, listen, we don't keep Shabbos and snack. But one thing, don't marry a non-Jewish girl. Whatever you do, don't marry a non-Jewish girl. Fine. As luck would have it, he's sitting in college class next to a Chinese girl. The next thing you know, he's married to her. A couple of years later, she starts getting involved in Yiddishkeit. And uh, she's Megayaris. She's Megayaris. Anyway, one day, the, the son calls up the father and says, you know, the Shabbat dinner we drive for to Minnetonka can't come anymore. He says, why not? It became Shomer Shabbos. Didn't I tell you not to marry a Didn't I tell you not to marry a Shabbos? Didn't I marry a Jewish girl? So you just know at the end of the day, sometimes this thing, it works out. Again, looking for it, but if it happens, it pops into your doorstep. No reason not to do what you have to do. So let's say we're talking about sneers. The famous heter of the Yorach HaShulchan, that a married woman doesn't have to carry her hair, is not the heter of the Yorach HaShulchan. The Yorach HaShulchan's heter is that if you're in the presence of a lady who's married and doesn't cover her hair, you can make a bracha or a kiddush and look the other way. That's the head of the Yerach HaShulchan. Look inside, that's his head. Somehow it morphed into you don't got to cover your hair. And there were gedolim and different issues, inside the house, outside the house, but as far as the Yerach HaShulchan is concerned, that was the head. Same thing over here. If you invite people to the house, and they're not just sneer stick or not covering their hair, look the other way. But don't like say, Kachavis, how are you? Obviously, Mich will explain to you that's not what we do. We don't do that. That's a cure of blunder. What you want to do, close your eyes with kavone, look gently the other way. So when it comes to everything that's negea, these issues, sneers. If let's say you have a couple, a couple that are not married, they're Jewish, but they're living together. What do you do? What you do is you invite them and put them in separate houses. That's all. No big deal. You're out of space. You can be my next door neighbor. Live together for five years. So you think you're going like, to be the machman, you're going to break up this thing? Maybe you'll be in and they'll get married. Live like you didn't. I had such a mice in Minneapolis. This fellow I know, coming about Shuva, Nachmash Tashem Shabbos, very successful guy. When I was up to me, you know, he went on a cruise with this lady. I said, Whatever his name is, let's say his name is uh, Saul. Saul, do me a favor. We had a cruise with the lady. We had separate rooms. Let me cruise with a lady. Get married already. Get married. Matsoye Shabbos. Not Matsoye Shabbos. Matsoye. Tsayim Gedalia. I flew to Minneapolis on the Tsayim and I married her. Chupa Kadush. Because that's my Shavi Yisro. So much that you can do. So much that you can do. You have to show love and caring. Al pi That's the kunz. To give away the ship, that's no big deal. We are makbid on halacha and the hashkafa and what Shabbos is and the beauty of Shabbos and menuchas Shabbos. But there are many ways that we can do this and not chas v'shalom encroach, insult, or turn them away. <clears throat> so. I'm ready to entertain any shyness that people would have, but I think we covered most of these issues. At the end of the day, this is Ribui Kvayt Shemayim. And what you think will turn someone off is going to bring them closer to Hashem. I had a Maisa many years ago with a couple that were from. But I wanted them to become more connected to the Torah, call it yeshivish, whatever you'd like to call it. So, I was living in Cleveland at the time. My wife was Mara Bela. And the children were in a nursery school. And I kept on inviting them, inviting them, inviting them for Shabbos, Mitzvah Shabbos. They finally came. So I broke open the CD. I'm all CD meant something else. Certificate of deposit. Remember those CDs? 
So the kids are, and I got lox and sable and bagels and cream cheese and say Shabbos, Gala Malava Malka. They come in, we're excited to see them. Good, good people. But I want them to have more of a Seder in learning. All of a sudden, we wash and we sit down. There's a knock at the door. Open the door. I'd never seen this person before in my life. I never saw him again. The most slovenly looking Mishalach I ever saw in my life. Six foot seven, huge. He had spit dribbling in his beard. It was Gefelach. I walk in, I'm convinced this guy's going to think this is like my chavrusa, he wants to borrow a safer, it's a curly guy downstairs. So I, I head off at the pass, and I say to the guy, you know, to go. He wants to sit, he wants to eat here. He washes his hands, he sits down, but against the prump, prump, prump noises, the wife just doesn't know what to do, she goes to the little bedroom that we had. He takes a piece of smoked fish, you know, Sable puts it in his mouth, spits it out. It's fakalach, he says. Spoiled. Tissue on the floor, on the table. I'm like, ready, Pasha, to, to die. I don't know what I'm supposed to do over here. Finally, he says, okay, maybe I will take it to go. I give him a check. He walks out the door, and I'm ready to bench. It's over, right? This Kvaldiga initiative never took off. The door closes, and this unbelievable fellow, who today is Mechutin with the Rav in his town twice over. His son is a Rosh Kailu, a Lakewood Kailu. He says to me, he was from the South, he said, you know, I went to day school. They taught us about the Chofetz Chaim. What you did is exactly what the Chofetz Chaim would have done. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine that? I thought, Churban, it's over, it's destroyed. Try 50 years from now, it's never going to happen again. And I could have staged it better. What you did, not responding, allowing the man in, sitting with him, allowing him to take it to go, and not responding, that's what the Chavetz Chaim would have done. Rabbi said, we're going to do what the Chavetz Chaim would have done. We all know that Maisa, Rabbi Weinzagazunt, said this many years ago in Florida, in his shul. His shul. There was a Bach and Rad that went off to Derech, and the Chavetz Chaim heard that the Bacha started smoking. So the Chavetz Chaim took him into his room, and spoke to him, and nobody knows what he said. And the Bacha came out crying, and kept Shabbos, became a Talmud Chach. So a barrel wine said, imagine if we knew what the Chafetz Chaim said. And an elderly Yid gets up from the back in Florida in the 60s, and he says, I was that Bacha. So what did the Chafetz Chaim tell you? He just said one word. He took my hand in his hand, and he said the word Shabbos, and he started crying. And the tears scalded my hands. And I could never be Mechal Shabbos after that. We may not be doing it this Shabbos with tears, but there'll be tears of joy. We'll dance, we'll sing, we'll laugh. We'll show them that Yidin that are integrated in society can live loyal lives of Torah and mitzvahs, and especially of Shabbos. That we should be zeicher b'siyata d'shmaya, to have a ribuik for shemayim. Keep on trying. If you don't have a, a, a guest yet, keep on trying. Invite them. Consult with Rabbi Yoni, Rabbi Yaakov, two outstanding talmidei chachamim. We'll put the heart and soul into this. B'shem zolns helfen that we should see a gavaldige kiddush Hashem on Shabbos both here and throughout the world, the Rebbe Nishim will have such nachas that we are concerned with all of his children that will hasten the coming of Mashiach Tzidkenu B'mhera V'yameinu.